Okay. All right. So, so here, listen up. We're going to be focused. We're now we're moving on to a specific case of rectangular components. Okay. A specific case of rectangular components and the application of the specific rectangular components to projectile motion. Okay. So we are talking projectile motion. Projectile motion. This would be some part B1, B subsection of our rectangular motion here. But this projectile motion, all right, and it all starts from acceleration when we have a projectile, okay, a projectile here, some particle that's launched, okay, whether it's in baseball and tennis or basketball, right, whatever it is, right, and it has some path that it travels, and it, and it, and it comes to some final position, okay, it has a final position. In order to define its position, what do we need? We need a, a reference, an origin, okay? So we have a, an origin here. So here, I'll just put the origin over here. This will be my origin. Here's X and Y. All of our projectile motion problems that we're going to deal with will be in 2D, okay, in two dimensions, right? We have also a, a velocity, an initial velocity. So here, let's, let's define its initial position. We'll call this X0 y0 okay and then we'll have a final position xf yf okay it's final position it could be anywhere it doesn't matter where the ground is or anything like that you you want to define everything according to its x and y components right uh, you know people are going to try to problems are going to try to scare you with various slopes and things and and all these different like golfer slope you know it shoots a ball off a hill you know, which has an incline of this. All it's trying to do is scare you, distract you from getting down to the two equations, two unknowns, okay? Every projectile motion problem defaults into two equations, two unknowns. Otherwise, you can't solve it, all right? All right, and I think, so we have a velocity, and the velocity is what in relation to the path? Everybody, what's the velocity in relation? Tangent, okay, it's tangent. So here is my tangent, so I'll call this V0, okay? And usually you're given a velocity vector which has both direction and magnitude, okay? So here we have a direction for this velocity vector. We'll say it has some angle theta, all right? And, and the thing that we always want to know, things that we always try to find in this is what's the, the maximum height that this thing traveled? What is this height, okay? Or what's the, what's the distance travel? What is this range, okay? or distance travel. These are all things that people try to find in these projectile motion problems, all right? But it all starts with acceleration, okay? It all starts with acceleration. So if I move this up a little bit, but here, if I start with acceleration right here, and if I look, let's just look in the X direction, okay? Let's look in the X direction, in the X direction. And which way do you want to say it's positive X? Well, we kind of to the right. Well, we kind of established that with our reference frame, okay? We established which way it's positive. So we said this is positive right here. And what's the acceleration in the x direction? Zero. It's zero, okay? So acceleration in the x is zero. That means the velocity. What does that mean about velocity? The velocity is constant. Good, right? So here this is vx equals the x component of the original velocity or the initial velocity, v0x, which in this case is just v0 cosine of theta, okay? All right, okay? So the, I, I've just taken, quote unquote, an antiderivative or the integral or whatever business that you want to call it, okay? And then what if, if I have constant velocity, what would I get for the, the uh, uh, position? What would, what would be the position equation? It, it would just be, xf is the final position is equal to x0 plus v0xt, okay? All right? We would take, again, an integral of, of this, this velocity equation, and you would have this, uh, uh, this position equation here, okay? So we have acceleration, velocity, and position. We could do the same thing, same thing with the, x, with the y direction. In the y direction, in the y direction, and which way is positive in the y direction? It's, it's up, according to our reference frame, it's up. So here this is positive, that's fantastic, okay? And what is the acceleration in the y? What's it? 
it's negative gravity, right? Negative G because our, our direction of gravity, the gravity acting on this particle through the entire length, doesn't matter where my particle is. If my particle were here, the acceleration of the particle is always G downwards, okay, on, on this planet, okay, right. <laughs> in this classroom. All right, okay. All right. And, and so we would take an antiderivative or integral of this acceleration, right? And based on whatever the initial conditions were, you know, we did all this the other day with 1D motion. It's ridiculous, right? But this is, you know, this is Vy equals V0Y minus GT, okay? Right? And then you would take another antiderivative or I'm not, I hate, I hate that word. Let's make it the integral of this right here. And it would just be Yf is equal to y 0 plus v zero y t minus one half g t squared. Okay, we'll take that integral there, right? And this v zero y is just v zero sine theta for the case that's given. Okay, sometimes you know people try to throw you off and and see, and they give you this angle here instead, right? From the vertical, just to see whether or not you're keeping the cosines and sines straight. Okay. Right? Okay, just to see what, what's going on, if you understand, don't give you that angle up there and say, you know, what is, and then they'll just say solve the problem, okay? All right. All right, good. I, I submit to you that basically with these two equations, this here, this position equation, the horizontal, and this equation here, you can solve any projectile motion problem. With the two position equations, that's all you need. That is it, okay? All right? That is it. That's all you need, okay? <laughs> and then now I'm about to say, with that being said, <laughs> all right? With that being said, sometimes they ask you for the max height. In the case of the max height or some other thing, what you do or what we do is we just combine, I will use a, a green for this, but we combine this equation with this equation here, okay? And when you combine these two equations, so we'll call this one and two, and if you combine one and two, right, if you combine one and two, substitute for time, you get a really popular result. You get Vy squared minus V0Y squared equals, uh, is it like minus 2G times Yf minus Y0, right? Have you guys all seen this before? Yes? Yeah, this is real popular in physics, okay? But all you do is solve for time here, solve for time here, and then substitute into that position equation, and this is what you get, okay? It would be the same thing if just on yesterday we had, we had this, we did this whole substituting for time thing yesterday too. Do you guys recall that? We had A equals DV DT, and then if we said, and then we said V equals DS DT, and then we solve for time and substitute into here, and we get this A DS equals V DV, okay? And if this is constant, if this is constant, AC, then we just get AC equals uh, S minus S zero, one half V squared minus one half V zero squared. Oh shoot, I ran out of space on the right, okay? v0 squared, okay, right there, it's exact, th these two, th they're not different, they're not different, okay, all right, okay, so with that, and I don't, I, I don't want to overemphasize that, because I want to emphasize again, that these two, these two equations here, the ones I've circled in red, this is all you need to solve every projectile motion problem, okay, that's it, all right, it doesn't matter where it stops, where it ends, Okay, you can solve every projectile motion problem with, with all that. All right, so I'm going to stop here.